In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a free mini scheme out of the Arizona playbook. This is the shotgun wide trips formation and how it can really be the X factor in the Cardinals book. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel basically focuses on helping you improve in Madden, uh, both in Madden 20 and in Madden 21. I've got a lot of really good stuff coming for you in Madden 21, but just wanted to get started. I think the Arizona playbook is going to be amazing in Madden 21, and so one of the things I want to do, if if that interests you, any of the things that I just said interest you, if you want to get better at Madden, what I want to encourage you to do is to join our Discord. My channel's Discord is in the link below, and by joining that Discord, what it's going to do is, number one, it's going to help you get better at Madden because you're going to join a community of people that are trying to get better. The other thing that it's going to do for you, though, is once we hit 100 people in that Discord server, we are going to be able to release to you a free offensive and defensive full playbook breakdown out of the Baltimore Ravens defense and the Arizona Cardinals offense. I'm going to give you my full offense, my full defense for completely free to my Discord members. So you'll want to be in that Discord server so you can get that. All right, so shotgun trips, and I want to talk about this formation. This is just kind of something I just found in the Arizona book, and, and I, I, I've got a lot of really good stuff for you today, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So the audibles you want to set are fade stops. You want to set the audible stick wheel. And then the only other audible you want to set is you want to set fake screen wide receiver wheel you also will have several plays that you can come out in. The play that I like to come out in every single time is sail. And there's a little bit of a specific thing that you want to do. This is why I like to run it with the Vikings. With the Vikings, you could put Stephon Diggs here on the left side, and he has an ability that's called Post Flag Elite. Post Flag Elite allows him to catch post routes at a really high level. And so that ability is actually really critical for the offense, specifically for the YCL play, and I'll get into why in just a minute. One of the other things that you can do is you can actually kind of change your packages up here, and you can, um, you, when you auto to this from the spread, you can get four wide receivers in. So you can see here, I could be in the spread Y flex, I could audible to trips, and I could have four wide receivers. But if you have a good tight end, you'll want to keep your tight end. So but we'll just run it with a tight end. It's not that big of a deal one way or the other. It's just kind of a speed thing. And so if you really want to have high speed guys, you'd want to do that. But anyway, let's jump into sale. This is pretty much my favorite play in the last uh, probably two days. I I really think this play really completes the Arizona offense. It's really that X-factor formation. And what I would say is what you want to do as a general rule is you want to have the trip side of the offense to the wide side of the field. So you could flip this if you want to. Um, again, it's, it's not that big of a deal either way. But what I like to do is, and there's several different ways you can run this offense, several different ways. The route, the primary route that I want to talk about is Stephon Diggs' route. There's a hot route system, and then you see here you have this fade to Johnson. That's why you really want to run the trips to the wide side of the field. So I'll give you an example. So if they go to like cover two, which I face a lot of cover two, what you'll find is if you take Kyle Rudolph here, and you could put him on just any route really, but I like to put him on a five-yard out route. I find that to be the most effective. And then what I would suggest you do is take your inside slot receiver, Adam Thielen, and just put him on a, uh, a little baby hitch route right there. That's, that's kind of how I run the play. Again, and I like to use the running back in pass protection, so you can do different things with that, which we talked about in our last video. So if you want to check that out, you can head over to the channel. But anyway, so basically this post route to... Um, to, to uh, Stefan Diggs, when he cuts across, you see he's going to get that diving catch animation. That specific animation is only on certain types of post routes. And so what I like about it is what you can do with this is it now sets this play up. Once he makes that break to the inside, I can throw it with an inside pass lead, click on, and he's going to make that aggressive catch. What that means for your offense is they're going to have to use or defend that route. And actually, you can kind of force it um, if they're using like a linebacker. So let me give you an example. So if they take KJ Wright or whoever and they throw him in a deep middle third, and this is what I really like about this route, you'll see here when you step up, cuts inside, pass lead inside, and you see you get that diving catch and he doesn't play it. He doesn't play it. Um, I've never been picked off by the computer throwing the route. Now, again, there's a lot of things that come with that. So... If they're not using it, you can throw it. When he cuts the inside, pass it inside, and you're going to get that aggressive catch. Now, the thing that I want you to remember with this is post-flag elite is kind of critical. You really want to have that ability on that receiver. It's going to help you a lot. It's going to help you a lot with it. Um, so you'll see here, just a simple, simple route 
right inside pass lead and you cut it off. You basically cut the cut the route off with your with your receiver. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is this route combination here on the left side of the field. So, for example, if they run like a cover two, like I said, I get a lot of cover two. This route combination on the left side is going to destroy cover two. Um, so here you'll see the, the fade on the outside. If I pass lead it far into the left, I can swerve to the inside and out, and I can possession I can possession catch it. It's going to work even better if they're base aligned. So I'll show you a I'll show you a base aligned look, and this is this is a look that I get a lot this year. Um, out of cover two. If you get a look like this on that right side, you're going to be able to just pass lead that instantly. It's just a snap throw, and you're able to hit it right over the top. The other way that you can the other way that you can hit that um, is if you throw it, even if they're man aligned, right? Even if they're man aligned, once he gets that outside release, that's when the throw. So there he is, and that's no cloud reroute, so you're able to you're able to get that off. So that's that specific route. The um, if they play hard flats, it's going to be even worse. The hard flats just going to bite down on everything even more. So you're going to have even more of a window. It's actually going to be a one play score against cover two defenses. So that's why this route is so critical. And when they you put them together, it really causes a lot of issues for the defense. You know, it, it really will cause a lot of challenges for them to stop. So what they'll probably run is they'll probably run some type of cover two, or, or I'm sorry, cover three or cover four, and that's going to open up these windows, these passing lanes here to this route combination. The hitch and the out route are going to now work together to really beat a lot of defenses. For example, if they don't have hard flats on the field, which most people don't really put hard flats on the field this year, you're going to be able to just snap, throw that little out route, and it's a quick five yards. What I like about that out route, again, it's just very, very quick little five yards. One of the things you could do if you wanted to is you could take Thielen, because he's got that route chemistry, you could take him and you could put him on a corner route, and then you could take Rudolph and just do a little um, little motion snap hitch route. You basically created a gun spread. You have basically created a gun spread with one of the best post routes in the game coming from the left side of the field. This was really significant because... Um, when you're when you're sim when you're simply just running standard gun spread, there's not a really good post route to the left side. So by having this play in your arsenal, that's why it really makes it that X factor type of type of attack. So anywho, all right. So gun trips. That's that specific play. Now what they're going to start doing is once they figure that out, they're going to basically use her deep to short. So they're going to use her the post route, but it's going to open up a lot of different things. They're going to know that they're going to have to use her that route. Let me show you one other little thing with this route. And it's kind of a snap throw, and it's again, it's a specific thing, but you'll see this a lot this year. You'll see a lot of pressure like this. So they're going to bring these guys in off the edge, and they're going to blitz them. And normally what they're going to do is they're going to use her one of these middle linebackers. What I like about the spread, and this is not true of any other formation, whichever side their user is on, whichever side their, side their user is on, that's the opposite side I want to throw. So in this scenario, his user is on the right side of the field. If they send pressure off that left side, I can snap and I can throw that route as a quick throw. That is what separates this specific route, in my opinion, from any other base post route in the game. Because most base po post routes, you can't do that. You can't snap throw it. It's angled. That's what I like about it so much. So again, if they're in shade over coverage, and then they bring the guys in, they're blitzing them off the edge. And then you can see here, I'm just going to use this linebacker. Bobby Wagner, at the snap of the ball, I'm going to look to Stephon Diggs. If there's no cloud, if there's no vertical hook, if there's no hard flat, it's because it gets so deep in the route, it's actually going to work really, really well. So snap of the ball, I'm just going to see, oh, there's no one in that space. And you see how you still get that diving catch animation. That's what makes this route so special. So again, I think it works best with Stephon Diggs. I actually think the Vikings are probably, if you don't need an escape artist quarterback this year, I think the Vikings are the best regs team in the game because their defense is so effective. I mean, maybe the Bra maybe the Patriots with Tom Brady because of his route um, hot routing ability. But let me show you like a simple, um, if they do, this is the, this is the cover two blitz. This is the cover two blitz that everybody loves. It's simple pressure right off that left edge. And watch, I'm going to snap 
and you see how whoops I accidentally um accidentally touch past it I think not sure why that happened but you can very simply bring because this is they have to number one they have to basically do they have to bring that guy in to get the pressure so it's kind of a tell right and at the snap of the ball you're gonna see snap throw right in that window and you see you get that diving animation it's because he's a partially because he's a linebacker partially because he's post flag elite but in my opinion it just it makes a huge difference in your offense the next play that i want to go over is you know essentially what's going to happen is they're going to start playing max coverage so you can easily just run this little rpo with Kirk cousins and if they um if they're pass committing it's just a simple read option it's a simple read option, but in my opinion, it's very powerful. It's the best one that I've been able to find in the Arizona playbook with the exception, I think, of one other one out of the gun spread. But from a trips perspective, I think this is pretty nice. So, again, and let me show you why sale against cover four. So, like, if they drop him out, if they drop that left guy out, so snap, throw, and you see there is the opportunity to pick it. So you do got to be a little bit careful, but it's really good for those blitzing defenses. And again, if it's covered, then you can just work the backside combination. All right, so now what I want to talk about is the RPO. So the RPO is kind of... Um, kind of a wrinkle play. It's what I call a constraint theory play. It's like when you don't know what to call, call this play. You're second and one or you're second and five or, you know, what, you know, whatever. But when you're in a situation where you just feel like you don't really know what to call and they're giving you a look that you might be able to run on, call this little play. You see that I've hit that so many times. If they don't option the quarterback, you're going to be able to hit that. Now, if they option the quarterback, let me show you what you can do. So here he's going to option the quarterback. I'm just going to hand it off and, and, and I'm just going to find a lane with, with Dalvin Cook. And again, it's just a simple run. Very, very simple run. But with how effective the run is in this year's game, you can very easily gain a lot of yards with that run. You can gain a lot of yards with that run. And if they're not disciplined and they're not pass committing, you're going to be able to hit that route. So you're going to be able to hit that little bubble route to Thielen. So here you're going to see they pass commit and he kind of stays out there. You see, I can't throw it. It is a read. You're going to need to read that player. If he, if that player comes in, then you don't want to, you, you don't, you want to throw it. Like if he blitzes off that edge, you want to throw it because that's telling you that he's in the run fit. So he's coming down. But if he doesn't blitz off the edge, you can hit that. You can just pop that little RPO for a quick gain. So again, if they come off the edge, I'm throwing that every single time. I don't care if they're going to use it. Most of the time, they're going to be worried about what you're going to do on that backside post. They're not going to worry about a little RPO for 10, 15 yards. And you see, if they blitz, and they, you know, basically the way that that's going to work is if they don't pass commit, they're going to be blitzing. So here, now I'm pass committing, and here you'll see the RPO. Now you see he stays out there, and I can't throw it. I have to make a couple of people miss if I do throw it. So it's not really a viable, um, it's not really a via, via, um, viable option. All right. So now let's take a look here at the play fade stops. So fade stops is, it's basically their version. It's it's my favorite version of four verticals. And the reason why is because what people are going to do to you, once they start to figure out kind of your system and your offense and what you're trying to accomplish, they're more than likely, they are more than likely going to run some type of cover three. And so what I like about fade stops is if you put the left side guy on a comeback route, so like Stefan Diggs, I'll just put him on a simple comeback route. And then Johnson, I like to put him on a little five-yard out route, little baby out route. He's my hot read. So against most defenses, you'll find that Johnson's route actually gets open. Basically, against everything against cover two, he's going to get open. Even cover three, and let me show you. So cover three, and they may do, maybe they may man a line, and they may go hard flats. If they do, um, let me show you what that looks like. So fade stops, and you'll see here, snap of the ball, and I'm just going to throw that out there. As you can see, they can't get out there. They have to hard flat. They have to kind of work on that cover two. So that's where, again, you get in that chess match because they can't really call cover two because of what we're doing from the base play. So now they're in just a little bit of a cat and mouse game, right? They're in a little bit of a cat and mouse game. You've got your quick read there on the left. 
if that's taken away, you're going to step up into the pocket, and you'll see here you can hit this route to Thielen, um, and that's cover four. And also, if they press, like if they're not pressing, you know, that's a whole other slew of issues. But if they press you, you'll see that that comeback is going to work even better because they don't have the they don't have the depth, they don't have the leverage to be able to get back there. And I face a lot of press coverage, so again, he's going to bite down on it. And I should be able to pop it, pop it right over the top. And again, it's not going to work as good against cover four, but let me show you, um, let me show you cover three real quick, because it works flawlessly against cover three. Because there's no deep safety to bail him out of that that issue. So that simple route to Thielen, again, you're throwing those quick reads on the left side or on the right side. Snap of the ball, you're going to be able to hit that. It's a one play score over the top. Ah, still a little bit. I think my timing is just a little bit off. You do need to work on your timing. You want to have um, against like really, really fast corners, you know, and there's some experimentation that you can do with this on your own as far as getting the right pull route. But if they're in cover three, you should be able to step up in the pocket and lunge it right out there. A little catch and run for the end zone. And it's going to work pretty good every time. Now, the other option that you could do, so let me show you, if they run something like, um, if they run cover four, there is something I did want to try out, and I don't think I've had a chance to test this out, but if you if you run the play fade stops, and you take Stephon Diggs, and you just put him on a 10-yard in route, you're going to create a little, um, I think it's called a Portland concept. But you see, you're going to be able to hit that. You're going to be able to hit that route over the top of them. Now, I wouldn't do this very often because the issue with that is the issue with putting him on a 10-yard in route is it makes the play a little bit easier to take control of from a user perspective because he can fake at the in route and then he could go up top, right? But you'll see here, cover four, pass lead up and over, and you should be able to get a nice little. It's it, you know, a one-on-one -on -one chance at least for for a grab. Let me show you how that works against cover three real quick. Um, and this is just shading, shading the coverage over top. I don't think it, it more than likely won't work with that route. Let's see if we can get it to work though. He comes in. Yep. You see how he goes with him. So that's kind of the cat and mouse game. You'll play with that. That's why I just like to, you know, I just like to say, okay, if they call cover four, you know, I'm going to be able to beat him in so many other directions. I'm going to be able to beat him with my quick game. This little route combination right here is going to be just, you know, roasting them underneath, 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 underneath. Well, then they call cover three, and I'm in fade stops, and now they're going to roll. Now, what if they call, like, what if they call something out, like base cover three, and let's just say they use her over the top for that one play score. You're going to be able to hit this seam route against cover three as well, that quick route, quick pop route up there. Um, that's that's the money route against cover three because the because of the way the game is played, for them to get out on the out route, they have to they have to shade coverage down and up. So they have to be in cloud flats. Cloud flat yellow zones aren't going to play that route. And as you can see there, um, the the curl flat routes are going to play those seams. So because of that, that's just again some more ideas of zone manipulation. But as you can see, and that's why you want to have that post flag elite because if you get caught in like a catch tackle animation then what's going to happen is if you have post flag elite, more than likely you're going to be able to come down with that ball. But here's fade stops. And again, this is the seam. But you see here, you can fit that in that seam right there. So that's that combination. And then let me show you like cover two. So if they run cover two, and, and when I show people cover two, I like to do it from kind of how I would run it. And so the way I would do this is I would throw a deep third in. So this is kind of a max coverage, you know, type of scenario from the play fade stops. So you'll see here, Johnson, more than likely, I'm going to put him on, again, that five yard or 10 yard out route. So this is probably going to do the best against the play fade stops. But you'll see here late, you can kind of fit that ball in at the seam there. But again, it's a little bit of a tender throw. More than likely, what you're going to do in a, in a scenario where they're in like a a true Tampa two, a true Tampa two, meaning that the, the vert hooks are going to follow up the seam. Then what you're going to need to do 
is you're going to need to, number one, probably work your check down game with your running back or your comeback. Because if they have a good user over top, there's not a whole lot that's going to be there for you. Um, you had you do have a, like a little one-on-one, but I wouldn't trust that this year. So, you know, I kind of stay. This is not a cover two play. Like if they're running a lot of cover two, you want to be in the play sale or you want to be in the play uh, RPO or you want to be in the play fake screen wide receiver wheel. Um, and there's some several different things you can do with all of these route combinations, but I just wanted to show you a couple. So like if they're in cover to man, if you're getting a lot of man coverage, I like to call this fake screen wide receiver will. And I just take Johnson and throw him on just a quick drag route. And then you'll see here, um, Stefan Diggs on that route. So basically snap of the ball, that route to Thielen is going to roast man. Ah, as I say that I get picked, um, that route to Thielen is typically going to roast man. And you'll see why here. You it's it's a lot about the pass lead, and so you want to make sure that when you pass lead this ball, you're getting it outside enough. That's kind of my most common issue with this, and that's why it doesn't work. But again, outside pass lead, and you want to click on and want to make a catch with your guy. So anyway, very simple little little route there. Let me show it to you one more time against man to man. And again, this is where I, you know, if I'm facing a lot of cover two or a lot of too high, I run this. But I don't really run fake screen wheel a lot. Um, right when he gets up the sideline, you see there you're going to be able to possession catch it. And normally he'll beat him a little bit worse than that. Like if, if they're base aligned, which you'll get a lot of that. I'm telling you, you'll get a lot of people. I mean, I'm guilty of that. If I was playing this, I would run base line defense against it. Well, if they're base aligned and they're in cover two, look how much separation that's going to mean for Adam Thielen. I mean, it's you're white, basically one on one with a safety at that point. So that's just a, a quick little read uh, against man to man. And then I wanted to go over um, the play uh, stick wheel. And this play is kind of a wrinkle play, but basically what you want to do is you want to smart route circles route. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to look right at that hitch route. And and most of the time, as I, I have a bad throw, you want to be low ball in your hitch routes. And that's one of the mistakes, one of the most common mistakes I make when I run this offense is I don't low ball my hitch, hitch routes enough. But that's really, truly one of the best ways to do this. So stick wheel, again, I'm just going to put my running back on a block and release pattern. But at the snap of the ball, I'm going to low pass and pass lead him open. Basically, what I mean by pass lead him open is whichever way he has leverage. If his leverage is inside, you're going to pass lead him inside. If his leverage is outside, you're going to pass lead him outside. But I really do like that specific route there to Adam Thielen. Um, and then you'll see with this, he'll have this backside um, route combination too. So you can actually fit this in against like curl flat coverage and things like that. Now, again, if they go to something like a cloud flat or they're kind of set, setting that up manually, then what you're going to want to make sure that you do is you're going to want to make sure that's why you want a smart route circles route. And when he cuts across the middle, it's an inside pass lead, just like a post on that left side. So inside pass lead, click on, and you're going to get that diving catch. But again, you got to be a little bit more careful with that specific route. So if they're, if it's a look where they're shading over top, sometimes the yellows do play it. And cover four is going to cover four is going to be your hardest defense with this. That's why I'm kind of showing it a little bit here. But cover four, as you can see here, you can pat, you can hit that little quick fade, but it, or that quick slant. You can hit that quick slant against a lot of different things. It's pretty good against man-to-man -man as well. Um, but cover four, you're going to want to hit that. Um, if they if they shade down, shade up, you're going to be able to hit that right there. You see you're going to get that same animation that we're looking for, that diving catch on those post routes with the inside pass lead. So now you have a post from the right and on the left. You have routes that go all together. If they run like a cover two on you, let me show you um, with the play stick wheel. You're going to see that route's going to get up the seam, up the sideline, pass lead the outside, and you can you can sometimes aggressive catch that, but you know I wouldn't I wouldn't count on that at all. But anyway, that's that's basically the the offense. And again, that's why I say this is something that is an X factor. It's a it's a formation you want to go to. It's kind of a mini scheme. It's a formation you want to go to under certain situations. You know, this isn't, I mean, it can be an every down offense, but I don't treat it like that. Um, 
what I treat it like is an offense that I want to go to to do some little things here and there. Um, but I'm telling you guys, this specific route to Stefan Diggs, if you if your guy has post flag lead, pass lead inside, you're going to click on, make that user catch. It's really, really good, really, really effective. And what I love about it is the ability to snap throw it. I think that makes such a big difference in your um, – in in your um in your way to do it because he's got those it's basically like a little it's it's a little bit deeper than a deep slant but you've got two windows at which you can throw this route and you see there um it's actually really good on the goal line too um you can you can fit you can fit that in but again it's just that snap throw and then you're going to get that user catch every single time so that's one of the things that i really like about this offense i hope this video was helpful to you and you see we can mix it in with other wrinkles and other route combinations that we have you see we can run basically a version of z spot out of it actually because of the route apprentice ability that adam thielen has so Trips is a nice little formation this year. It actually does a really good job. If you're getting a lot of match coverage, like if people are running like cover three match or cover three blitzes and things like that, this is going to be a great offense for you as well because you're going to be able to really beat the match um, with the play fake screen wide receiver wheel. Let me show you that really quickly, and I don't even know if I can, but let me um, let me illustrate that really quickly. I'm just going to come out in like a cover three match. I just want to show you kind of how this works and how these things can really help you. Um, if you go to the play, um, let me see if I, maybe it's in the dime two, three, six, but it's um, cover three match right there. And this is a, a tactic. A lot of people are using, they're using cover four palms. They're using cover three match because they, the matching principles help with some of the inside breaking patterns. The problem is it doesn't help with all the outside breaking patterns. So if I ran cover three match, um, against me you're going to see here this you still have that window and i i missed my timing up a little bit and that's why you want to practice all this in practice mode before you jump into a game but you'll see here you're still going to have that window to be able to hit your post flag guy but then what's going to happen is you know they may use it or, or whatever and i just want to show you this play fake screen wide receiver will you're going to take johnson you can put him on an in route or a drag block your running back and you'll see here this route to adam thielen should get so wide open um, you should have multiple routes open against cover three match. Now, one thing you might need to do with this specific offense is because the running backs on the left side, you might need to audible or just motion him to the left. And it's going to give you a nice match with three by you're going to be in a three by one set with your running back. And now you'll see the defense is going to defend it just a little bit differently. Um, and I also think it matters like man align and all those things. But in as a general rule, the route to Adam Thielen should beat most match defenses, especially if you're running like a little in breaking pattern to um, as we're really struggling with our pass protection because we're not sliding. <laughs> but the route to Adam Thielen should beat most cover three match defenses. Um and again, I would just recommend if you're having any issue with match motion, Dalvin Cook to the right. And then you'll see here at the stamp of the ball, you should get that. Um, either one of those vertical routes should be open. I think Adam, they're, they're doing a good job against Adam Thielen here. But you'll see, like, if I go to if I go to the play stick wheel, this is also a really good play for cover three match. The wheel route to the right side should be wide open. And that's par partially why the run and shoot really enjoyed these switching concepts was you're going to basically force the defense to, to adjust to you. So, but again, your, your, your standard stuff still really works really well. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this little mini scheme out of the trips. This is kind of what I consider to be the X factor formation in the Arizona Cardinals playbook. And if this video helps you and you want to stay up to date with more Madden 20 stuff and Madden 21 stuff, Trust me, join our Discord server. It's gonna not, it's you're not gonna want to miss what's gonna happen there. It's gonna be great. It's a play, great place to talk Madden, build community, and also a great place for you to win.